Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, December 29th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, California is set to start seizing firearms January 1st without any notice to the owner. Then, the feds want you to be on high alert this New Year's, even though there is no specific terror threat. After that, how 2015 was a dangerous year for journalists. And after many shady hires, the TSA is increasing screening of its employees. I want you to explain how this iPad left at a TSA screening station ended up in your house. My wife's, I'm so embarrassed. Your, your my wife? wife? My wife says she got the iPad. That's next. They do what they want. They're dirtbag crooks building armies of servile, minimum wage, ADIQ, low-grade morons who will do whatever they're told. I read the TSA blog where they, the TSA is in there commenting. They are Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new, groundbreaking, gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 well, we're in the midst of a never-ending war on terror, and it doesn't seem to matter who's going to be elected in 2016. They are pushing for even more war. And now a Democrat has come out calling for a little small surtax on the American people to pay for the war against the Islamic State. This is Senator Chris Coons. He's a Democrat from Delaware. He went on the Morning Joe show to call for just a small surtax to pay for this war Never mind that it's been a totally ineffective air campaign that thus far has cost more than $5 billion. So Coons says that in addition to authorizing Obama's unconstitutional authorization for use of military force, Congress must levy a new tax on Americans to pay for military action against the Islamic State. Now, the U.S. has spent more than $5 billion on the war against Islamic State since just August 2014. The daily tab for fighting ISIS has climbed more than 20% between May and October of this year. Uh, we're paying nearly a million dollars a day, according to the Pentagon's latest public figures. And the cost, of course, is expected to rise considerably now that Obama and his administration has said that they're going to even step up this campaign to wipe out the group. And like I said, this has been largely ineffective. ISIS has continued to grow. Um, current intelligence estimates are putting them 20 to 30,000 fighters. And they only just began doing these air campaigns against the oil fields and being able to report that they've taken out the ISIS leader who was responsible for the Paris terror attacks. So it's been wholly ineffective. And now they're saying they need even more money. Well, I've got an idea of how you can pay for this war against the Islamic State. Stop funding them. Stop training them. Stop dropping weapons into their territory. Stop training moderate rebels who defect to ISIS. I mean, it's a total joke, and I'm sick and tired of my tax dollars going to this never-ending war on terror that they are basically promoting and funding here. Um, but here's another idea of how to uh, pay for this war against the Islamic State. Stop spending federal tax dollars on mosques with links to terrorist organizations. Now, this is the Islamic Center of Greater Kansas City. They've received $2.7 million from the Department of Agriculture since 2010. 
This is a mosque linked to the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, this money largely went to the mosque's Crescent Clinic. It uh, provides services through their WIC program, and their most recent payout was uh, about $300,000 handed out October 1st. Now, property records show that this mosque is owned by the North American Islamic Trust, which acts as a financial holding company for Islamic organizations. It offers Sharia compliant financial products to Muslim investors. It operates Islamic schools and it owns more than 300 other mosques throughout the US. Now, Joe Biggs is gonna be reporting on some other sketchy schools here in the US with links to terrorism that are of course being given federal funds uh, coming up later this week. But now here's a report from John Bowne breaking down this small surtax to pay for the war on terror. The year-end disapproval polls of Congress are rolling out. According to the latest Gallup poll, 82% disapprove of the way Congress is handling its job. Real Clear Politics Congressional Job Approval is at 75.8% disapproval. Mainstream media polls even have to accept the boiling anger running its course through America. As the CNN ORC poll racks up to 75% disapproval and CBS New York Times is at 74%. The holiday season isn't even over yet. And fresh off of the heels of the treasonous Paul Ryan-led omnibus funding of the Defense Department to the tune of at least $2 billion dollars while ignoring an enemy invasion of the United States. Meanwhile, dropping a pile of cash on the sanctuary city's operations being flooded with non-vetted refugees, a ticking time bomb waiting to happen, all paid for by your tax dollars. Is it any surprise that the career corporate politicians that have occupied the nation's capital would start floating their latest bonehead idea from their arrogant bubble as if anybody in this country actually accepts it? It seems to me that we'll have to buy borrow additional money from China in order to run this war. So let's have a war tax. Now, more idiotic rhetoric from the left as Democratic Senator Chris Coons, who in addition to authorizing Obama's unconstitutional authorization for use of military force, minus the ground troops, says the Congress from hell should now levy a new tax on Americans to pay for military action against the Islamic State. How are we going to pay for it? All the previous wars, as you referenced, before Iraq and Afghanistan had a dedicated war surtax. And I think that's one way we could fairly pay for it with a small surtax that exempted uh, active duty military families and veterans. Uh, but there's other ways we could pay for it. We just can't keep going without even discussing it. That's right. The little boys and their brand new shiny toys over at the Pentagon need more of your tax dollars to fund another one of their blatant fake wars with an enemy they created and support. Maybe we should send our war tax dollars to Putin as he did more damage to ISIS in three days than the United States did in one year. Vocative reports the daily tab for fighting ISIS had already climbed more than 20% between May 21st and October 15th of this year, from 9.1 million a day to nearly 11 million per day. According to the Pentagon's latest public figures, more than half of these costs came in the form of airstrikes, which the U.S. has employed since August of 2014 to pound Islamic State targets. Munitions, logistics, and operational support accounted for the remaining costs, according to the Pentagon. Despite spending billions, the air campaign has failed to weaken the Islamic State, according to intelligence officials. A defense official told the Associated Press, we've seen no meaningful degradation in their numbers. He cited intelligence estimates that put the Islamic State's total strength at somewhere between 20,000 and 30,000, virtually the same number as last August when the airstrikes began. Face it, you sell out ideologue suits bumbling around the district of criminals. The poll numbers and an average of black budgeted 1.6 trillion in annual never ending war costs don't lie. The days of wagging the dog for the assumed idiotic taxpayers you've robbed year in, year out is coming to a screeching halt. John Bound for Infowars.com. According to the latest report from Reporters Without Borders, 110 journalists were killed around the world in 2015. But what's surprising about these figures is that this year, the majority were killed in supposedly 
peaceful countries. And the, the group lists the war-torn Iraq and Syria as the most dangerous places for journalists, followed by France, of course, after uh, eight journalists were killed there and the jihadi assault against the Charlie Hebdo uh, magazine. And India has been listed as Asia's deadliest country for media personnel. And they say that this high toll is largely attributable to deliberate violence against journalists, and it demonstrates the failure of initiatives to protect media personnel. And they talk about the growing role of non-state groups, um, such as the Islamic State group, in perpetrating these atrocities against journalists. And we've reported here on numerous occasions that there is a war against journalists, a war against the media here. Um, and also, we're witnessing a major war uh, toward the First Amendment, which of course protects journalists. Now, something else that they're reporting um, it's not just frontline journalists that are feeling these effects of constantly having to pump out this war propaganda. Reporters are now claiming to have PTSD from watching violent news. And this is according to a new study of media and human rights workers. Um, they uncovered claims of PTSD and vicarious trauma from those who are working with video and audio that shows terrorist beheadings and city shootings. And the biggest impact came from the sound of victims screaming. They note that whether it's a broadcaster, publisher, human rights, or humanitarian professional, symptoms associated with post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, previously only observed in professionals deployed in the field, are now evident amongst staff working in offices, um, what they're calling the digital front lines. So, seeing some side effects. It's not just you who are being constantly terrorized with all of this never-ending war on terror propaganda. The journalists themselves, who are largely, uh, that's their role they must play, are starting to feel the effects of this constant uh, onslaught. I mean, I know for myself, I have my first silver hairs after working here at InfoWars, so it's not an easy job. Now, of course, we are heading into the new year, and so with that, there are not threats, but there is a heightened alert. Belgium arrests two people over suspected New Year attack plot. Now, this is the federal prosecutor's office in Brussels. Uh, they said that Tuesday, police seized military-style training uniforms, computer hardware, and Islamic State propaganda material in raids around the capital uh, there in Brussels. Investigators said that these were not linked to the wave of, of deadly attacks in Paris in November, um, but they do say one of the two was arrested on suspicion of planning attacks as well as playing a lead role in the activities of a terrorist group recruiting for terrorists. Uh, the second one faces charges of planning and participating in the activities of a terrorist group. Now, Brussels has raised the terror level uh, for police and soldiers, saying that they could be symbolic targets uh, as well as other landmarks there. Parisians as well are fearing terror attacks for New Year's Eve, and they're planning all of their parties outside of the capital. Caterers say that their orders have fallen drastically. Uh, people are reportedly reluctant, reluctant to organize events that involve a lot of people, and France remains in a state of emergency. Uh, the capital, they're on edge. They're getting reports of suspicious packages an average of 25 times a day. So people are definitely on high alert there. And of course, in New York, where more than a million people typically attend uh, uh, the ball drop there for New Year's Eve. They are planning extensive security preparations uh, for the more than hundreds of thousands of people who are going to be ringing in New uh, their New, New Year's Eve there in New York. Now they said that they're going to be a total of about six thousand officers on hand, uh, but they're also going to be having about five hundred plus officers from the new anti-terror force, the Critical Response Command. So these are people who are specifically trained and specialized there in preventing terror. And of course, even here in Austin, there is no credible threat, but the FBI is asking Austin residents to be on high alert. Now what this is, this is part of a program that they're wanting to get more people to start reporting suspicious behavior that could potentially stop a terror attack or an act of violence before it happens. Now their experts are saying that uh, people are using non-suspicious items like soda can or even children's toys to create explosive devices. Again, there's no credible threat against Austin, um, but they say they want people to report because there could be a threat that they don't even know about. So we went out to the streets to ask people here in Austin, have they heard of this terror threat? Uh, are they concerned? How do you even spot suspicious activity? 
activity um, in a city where everyone's a little bit weird. And, you know, we wanted to find out if this is going to be an effective um, maneuver or if it's just going to be putting people on heightened alert and suspicious of their neighbors.